It's great that we're here to celebrate this uh, campaign for social science in the form of this first inaugural lecture. And what I like about the campaign for social science is that it is essentially a positive endeavour. It is not um, uh, based in a feeling of kind of vulnerability or a uh, feeling that social science is under threat. It's confident. There's lots of great things about social science. There's lots of great social science going on in this country. We should be proud of it. We should celebrate it. And we should encourage its further growth and encourage people to engage with some of the fascinating, interesting, and important observations and findings that we uh, uh, get from social science. And we, so we've got, I think, a lot that we can be proud of. We are, uh, just in terms of the quantity and uh, quality of social science research, we are second only to the US. We've got particularly outstanding performances when you look at the QS international rankings in areas such as psychology, human geography. And I've actually, this morning, flown back in from a weekend science and research conference in the US. And I can report to you, absolutely, you know, talking to John Holdren, President Science Advisor, the acting head of the NSF, uh, Francis Collins of the NIH. There are issues about budget pressures because of sequestration and also uh, congressional uh, attempts to steer or intervene in specific disciplines such as notably political science, which does make it a tough environment for them to support social science in the US. And I think uh, coming back here, we can be proud of what we are achieving. We do at least have a stable science budget, 4.6 billion pounds per year. And of course, as you know, and it's a, something I try to emphasize, when we call it a science budget, it is science in its broadest sense. Uh, it is a money the, where we have maintained the balance across the different disciplines because one of the great strengths of our research base is precisely its extraordinary breadth. And there are no significant problems in the world now that are going to be addressed or tackled by people working within one disciplinary framework and, are, and without uh, learning and cooperating from others in other disciplines, and it's be it climate change or demographic change or terrorism or whatever, they all require uh, to be addressed by people coming from a range of different disciplines. And when we try to measure the performance of the uh, British uh, science and research base, one of its great qualities is that for a medium-sized economy, we are world-class in so many different respects and so many different disciplines. And in turn, and this is something that's even harder to pin down, we seem to be very well connected. We seem to be better at making connections between different disciplines. There's always more that we need to do. But the sophistication of the connections between disciplines is another one of our strengths. And uh, I should mention here, as a crucial contributor, the work that the ESRC does uh, with uh, its budget and much of the projects that it supports, graded as good, very good, or outstanding. And we've been, out of its budget, it's putting about 140 million a year into simply current expenditure on research. That's before you then turn to some of the capital, which I want to talk about later. Um, and I fully support, therefore, your campaign and your mission to educate the public on what social science is and why studying it is worthwhile and exciting. That seems to be the basic proposition that unites us, that it is a mark of our humanity, that we want to understand how we live in society, both our own society, and we want to understand the extraordinary diversity of societies across the world. And that's an incredibly and inherently worthwhile activity.